Okay, and next, we're going to look at some planning and scheduling tools. So first, let's just take a look at what the material planning overview for Cloud Suite Industrial is. Cloud Suite Industrial has several options for planning and scheduling. At the easiest level, we could do master production schedule, which basically means you tell it what you want to make and when you want to make it manually, similar to building a forecast manually, uh, and the system will plan based off of that. Um, no one really wants to do that. Uh, the next level, even though we'll call it, it's labeled number four here, but it's the next level in, in complexity, I suppose, uh, which is traditional MRP. Uh, traditional MRP just says, you know, what is the lead time and when do you need it? Um, so if you said you had something with a 30 day lead time and you put something in a system that said it was due today, it would assume that you could get it today, but it would tell you you needed to order it 30 days ago in the past. So it doesn't use the today fence as a, as a barrier for, for planning and scheduling. It still assumes that you could get it today, even though you really didn't release it and there's no way you could get it for 30 days. Um, the next option beyond that is what we call advanced MRP, which is really what uh, is also called infinite APS, APS being advanced planning and scheduling. So this really is a big step up from traditional MRP because it will use actual capacity within the system to schedule. Uh, the only thing is it will use that capacity and the time involved rather than the lead times for manufactured items and it will just back schedule from the due date uh, and assume infinite capacity. So it, if you have eight hours worth of capacity on a particular resource and the schedule finds that it needs to schedule 16 or 24 hours in that same bucket, it will. Um, so it doesn't look at the actual capacity of the machine. It just assumes that you will figure out what you're going to run. It'll say, here's all the three jobs you need to run. Which one do you want to run? Then we go to the top of the food chain, which is APS, Advanced Planning and Scheduling Planning Mode, which is finite capacity planning. This really and truly takes the finite capacity of your resources into consideration when scheduling. It won't try to schedule uh, and plan materials, for that matter, uh, within a finite capacity zone, meaning if you have eight hours of capacity, it's going to fill that eight hours with the first job that has highest priority and the next job that needs to go there is going to get pushed out or forward depending on how you want to do it but it will backward schedule from the due date find openings in that finite capacity schedule and also schedule materials based on when it finds that open capacity for our example we are going to be using that APS finite planning uh, schedule and the way that works is it's going to run overnight on a schedule. You can run it during the day if you wanted to but there's no need to because the system with APS will automatically plan jobs into the schedule as you enter them so there's no need to run a schedule throughout the day as things change. They're actually being scheduled as you put them in the system. So once that runs, we have something called a material plan or workbench, which is the results of that planning. And from a purchase order standpoint, so if we're looking at supply chain, as opposed to job, we, we have other things, but we'll focus on purchase orders and, and jobs for the most part. But if we're looking at purchase orders and we have today's order selected, we're really looking at everything that the APS system told us we need to order today or release today in order to get on time by the due date. So it's looking at what the lead time is from that vendor, what the due date is that we said we needed it or that APS scheduled the resource that needs it, and it backs it up and gives us a, a release date. So looking, you know, in a perfect world, we're looking at everything on a daily basis of what we should release today and just work on that list. Um, we can work on this week's orders if we want to get ahead of the game with some orders that are beyond today. 
or we can look at everything that it planned for as far out as APS will, will plan. And you can set how far out you want it to actually go, whether it's six months, a year, or whatever. Generally, you, you tie that in whatever, what, with what your longest lead time items might be, uh, and then plus uh, a buffer. But generally, the most common is this week's orders. You're going to work on what's due this week. The nice thing about it is, as I select these lines, I can see uh, up top the comparison. I have two vendors set up for this, a primary and a alternate. And I can compare. The primary vendor is 15 cents a piece, and my lead time is three days. My alternate is a little bit cheaper, but longer lead time. So I could decide whether or not I want to use the alternate because I'm okay with the lead time, or it could be opposite where the alternate is more expensive, but a shorter lead time. And maybe I'm willing to pay the extra money to get it sooner. Uh, but you can make those decisions as you go along. You also have something called source rules and, and I don't have an example on my screen, but what source rules actually give you the ability to do is split demand among multiple vendors. And there are some uh, requirements out there for some contractors, whether it's government work or automotive, that that require you to split um, your supply between vendors. So if you got a, for example, if you had to split it 50% among two vendors, you can tell it here who the vendors are. And when planning runs, it would have actually created two planned orders and split them evenly among those uh, vendors with, according to those source rules. I can drill into the demand, you know, the reasons that I need all of these and so forth. So I have everything at my fingertips to make the, the decision I need to make on these purchases. But real easy, I can either uh, select all of these lines if I was, was okay with bringing them all in. I can select the date range and tell it to select everything in that date range and it will automatically check them for me. Um, and the other thing with that is everything that I check, if I want to go look at my summary, it will let me know the value of everything that I have on my workbench and the value of everything that I selected. So if I have limits to my purchases uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever the case may be, I can keep control of that before I actually go and place these purchase orders uh, to see if I'm within the limits that I need to stay in. And then it's just a matter of hitting generate orders and it will automatically generate your purchase orders. Uh, same thing for jobs. Uh, when you're looking at job orders, your manufactured items, I can, I can work it the same way. I can see why it's needed. I can, um, I can actually combine where I, where I need to do that. And it's just a matter of selecting what I want to release and generating orders. Very simple.